Let's now complete our developments for the student management system class by adding some error uh, handling mechanism as we did for the student class. If you just go to the student management class and then go to the add student method, which we did uh, several videos ago. So now you can see that we said to do error handling for two conditions. Number one, if S is already exist in the, uh, if the student name that we are trying to add is already exist in the course management system. For example, what we have over here, we got Jim and we got Tom. If we are trying to add another student called Jim again, there'll be a clash. Okay, that's error number one. Also error number two, uh, it could be that the maximum capacity is already reached. So let's say if you get into, uh, let's say uh, uh, the maximum number of students we can have would be uh, defined, it's defined by this uh, constraint over here, six. If you already got six students uh, in the system, but we are trying to add number seven, that will also be considered as an error. Okay, how do we do that? Okay, well, so we talk about how we can do for the student class by adding two attributes over here. So we got a two attributes, error and error message. We do exactly the same thing. And also the set error and reset error. Okay, we just copy these four stuff over here, error and error message attributes, set error and reset error uh, methods. Okay, that's what I will copy. And then I will go to the student tester over here. No, the student management system. Okay, so now what I will do is un uh, after NOS, I'll put it like here, okay? Set error and reset error, okay? So now we got these uh, uh, support stuff for the error handling. So now what can we do for the S students? Okay, let's go to S students over here. For S students, condition number one. What if S already exists? How do we tell? We can find out the index of this particular students and then we can uh, see. So we can say integer in, uh, index is index of students and so students dot name, okay? If you simply just pass student s over here, it's not going to compile because index of students is expecting a string name, okay? If you move that over, uh, if you move your mouse over over here, uh, Okay, it's better to actually see the index of student to actually show you. You can see the index of students method at the front over here. The index of students is expecting a string name, a string. But we are now currently passing an S, which is a student. So this is not, it's not compatible. So what we should have done would be S dot name. Okay. Okay, now we can say if index is less than zero that means the students uh does not uh the student does not exist in which case yes we can add it otherwise if it is larger than or equal to zero it's an error so what we can do well, let's just do it this way if it's larger than or equal to zero that means stu uh s dot name already exists so that's an error so what i can do is set error over here error Students as the name already exists. Okay, and then we can say otherwise when we have no error, we can simply do what we are supposed to do to add a new students. Okay, so now what about number two? Another error condition. And the pattern goes like this if error number one occurs, set the error number one. Else if error number two occurs, set error error number two and else if else if until there are there are actually no errors, in which case we go to the else part and do the normal stuff. Okay? So now we can say else if over here. So now how do we express to say the maximum capacity is already reached? How do we know how many students we have in the student management system? We got NOS, right? It uh, tells us how many students we have. So remember. NOS is, NOS is very useful counter for us. Okay, if this is already currently equal to uh, the maximum number of students, then that means we cannot add, add, uh, add any more. So we can say set error, and we can say error maximum capacity already reached. Okay, 
And now, if there's no error, we can just reset the error. Okay, remember that's what we did before, right? Okay, now all we should do is we can make sure the two string method is also updated accordingly. Okay, let's do that very quickly. So now we can say that if error is there, in that case, we're going to say s is reassigned to error message. Otherwise, we're going to do this. Otherwise, we're going to do whatever uh, the output should be for output, outputting the contents for this current system. Okay, so now that will be it. Very similar to how we did before for the student class. So I'm not going to talk about in details to repeat. Okay. So now let's go to student tester over here. Let's just test very quickly. So currently, so now we have already got uh, two students, right? We already got Jim and Tom. Let's just try uh, adding a student that already exists. Why don't we try that first? So now what you can say is you can say s dot add SMS dot, oh, actually not student tester student management tester. That's what I meant to go. Okay, SMS tester over here. And now what I will do is I would say SMS dot at, uh, let's say students, you can either put string name or you can put uh, students, right? So let's put students over here. Okay, so now Let me just call the second version of the method so you will see exact uh, you will see a similar working. Remember back in the student management system, you can remember that the as students over here is actually used in the as student class over here. So it doesn't matter which one we call it, they work the same way. Okay, let me just use this one here. Okay, so we will see that. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll go to the student tester over here. So now we'll say as students, let's say, let's say I'm trying to add Jim again. Jim already exists. And now if I say as out, and then I can say uh, system out the print line, as the out, uh, SMS dot to string. Okay, it's out over here. Okay, I can say after attempting to add an existing student's gym. Okay, after that, what's gonna happen? If I run a tester over here, I'm gonna see on the console over here, after attempting to do it, error, student gym already exists. Okay, so that means we actually got into this particular branch when we try to execute a method, this particular branch. Okay, let me also show you how we can create an error for that just as a test. If I go there, currently we got six students, right? So now what we can do is, first of all, we can do, and remember, it's also crucial for you to actually call the reset error. We say that if you didn't have this line here, if you try to call the same operation, uh, in a particular sequence that you may actually got output the wrong error message or just uh, just give the false alarm as we illustrated before. Okay, so now if you go to SMS tester over here, so now we say SMS dot at uh, students. So now we got Jim and Tom. So let's add uh, four more students. Let's just make it easy. A, B, C, D. Okay, so after adding, after adding four more non-existing students, so after that, we're gonna say to string again on SMS. Let's see what we got. So we should have reached a maximum capacity for uh, the array. Okay, so now what you will see is, first of all, you can see from the previous students, from the previous one, we got now, 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 and now. But now we don't have that anymore. You can see the first student is Jin, second student is Tom, third student is A, uh, fourth student is B, and fifth is C, 
and the six is D. So now we cannot add any more students. Let's try to add any uh, uh, one more. After attempting to add an uh, at the seventh students, in which case it's already uh, it's going to be error because we already reached the maximum cap. Okay, now let's say SMS dot add students students and then I'm gonna pass E over here. Now if I run the tester over here, it's gonna be right. You will have you will see that error maximum capacity already reached. So that's how we support the error handling. Okay, and especially this time I kind of show you that. Uh, you may get more than, let me just get, get back there and make my point. In, uh, in general, you might get more than one possible errors for a particular method. Okay, So that's why I can have the if and else if pattern here for you. To say you put the error condition first, if, else if, else if, as many as you uh, as, as necessary, and then the else part will be reset the error and do the normal stuff. Okay. So now, what you can do is uh, we can go to the uh, I will leave some exercise for you. For example, here, how do we set the marks? For setting the marks, you want to make sure the name of the student must exist, right? In that case, uh, exercise for you, okay? Exercise, and also to get the marks, also the student must exist, also an, as an exercise for you. Uh, okay, what else? And also, uh, adding the course record, also we want to make sure the student does exist, also, exercise for you okay and, and I think that's it okay let me recap very quickly what we have done in this video and I'll recap what we have done in the entire tutorial series so what we did in this tutorial video we just uh, apply the same pattern for error handling a simple one so you got a boolean error and string error message and we got set error and reset error Okay, and usually what we do is I show you something here. Let's say for S students, now in any method you want to support error handling, what you can say is, you can say if, else if, else if, for as many as you think that's necessary for each error condition. And for each one of them, you just say set error and set error. And make sure in the else part, you're doing the normal part where you gotta say reset error. Otherwise, when you have a particular uh, sequence of method calls, you might output the wrong thing. Uh, it's also important to uh, extend your to string method to say if error, then I'll print out the error message. Otherwise, I will print out the normal stuff for my objects for the student management system. Okay, so now that's about for this particular tutorial video. Let me just recap for this entire tutorial series for you. So in this entire tutorial series, we have done lots of uh, uh, technical details for you to see how we can create three model classes so we got three levels, and this is the kind of uh, structure we can build. At the first level, we got course record over here. At the second level, we got, uh, actually, it's actually easier to show you this diagram over here. How about here? Okay, at the first level, we got course record. At the second level, we got students. At the third level, we got SMS, Student Management System. So we got three classes for you to implement. And for each one of them, we got mutated methods, we got accessor methods, which will also require the use of loops. And also, most importantly, you should really understand whenever you have array, like a students or courses, you should have an associated counter, like an NOS for the number of students, or the number of NOC for the number of courses. So the array and the integer counter should work together in order to support the adding of the uh, object into your array, okay? So make sure you review every detail for this tutorial series. It's really important for you to, for you to really complete the later exercises and also to, uh, to do the uh, exam. 